everybody and welcome back. This is a video I've been promising for a couple of weeks and teasing out. It's about the beauty industry greenwashing and what you can do within your routine to try and make as minimum impact on the environment as possible. Now this is a video that nobody would have created 10 years ago unless you were incredibly left field but now I feel it's every beauty company's responsibility to try to minimize the impact of their products on the environment. Why do I say that? Because beauty isn't essential. It's essential to you and I, but it's not essential to the great wide world. And there's a lot of greenwashing. And by greenwashing, I mean companies that give a nod to caring about the environment, but really don't. And I'm gonna come back to the original moniker of anybody that cared about the environment. And that is reduce, reuse, recycle. And I think the problem is that the industry has focused on recycle and it hasn't actually focused on reduce because why would it? Because that gets them where it hurts, which is in the pocket, it's in the budget, it's in the marketing person's nightmare for you to buy less stuff. But the good news is the reuse is going through the roof. And it's looking good, right? So let's start with reduce. How do you reduce the amount of products you buy? It's kind of easy, really. You save yourself some money. You buy products that are supersized. You buy products that you know you love. You don't buy a new product until the empty of that product has finished. Cleanser, acid, retinol, vitamin C. I know this seems like I'm shooting myself in the foot here, but I'm trying not to encourage you to buy a whole host of stuff. What I'm trying to get you to do is buy wisely, which is why I champion the high streak, because I want to save you money. But also, more importantly, I want you to be a savvy skincare consumer. I don't want you to be blinded by science. I don't want you to be blinded by the glamour of it. I don't want you to have a shelfie with 80 different products on it. Nobody needs it. It's why I always say my routine is gentle, rinse off gel cleanser in the morning, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, moisturizer with an SPF, that's enough. And then at night, gentle rinse off cream cleanser, and then some sort of barrier function, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and retinol. That's it. That's my entire routine. Three steps in the morning, three steps at night. I want you to become a savvy skincare shopper, and a savvy skincare shopper does not mean buy more stuff. It really doesn't. Um, I'm even telling Joe the whole time, stop buying stuff, stop buying stuff, stop buying stuff. Anyway, so reduce. If you really care about the environment, reduce the stuff you buy, clothes, beauty products, but think carefully about the stuff you are gonna buy. Make sure you can afford it. Make sure it's effective. Make sure that it has some sort of eco-credential. By that I mean, if you look on the brand's website, have a look sustainability, have a look to some sort of, make sure they're not greenwashing. And by that I mean, they're not sort of playing, they're not being clean and green, they are actually making a difference. This is how you can make the difference. Right, let's look at packaging for a start. There is absolutely minimum reason now why brands should be putting, should either be sending me stuff or putting stuff out in super expensive packaging that cannot be reused. Perfect case in point. And I'm gonna give a huge shout out here to the brand I think that pioneered this, Lush. Now I don't have a Lush product here, not because they didn't offer to send me a whole host of stuff, but I don't need stuff, but I wanna give the biggest shout out to Lush because I genuinely believe that along with the Body Shop, Lush and the Body Shop were talking about this decades ago. Decades ago, there is a reason why you can go in and cut off slices of shampoo bar, cleansing bar, put it in a brown paper bag. That's how you do eco beauty. The products aren't sophisticated, but if that's what you want to cleanse your body or cleanse your hair, it works. Same with the body shop. What I love about the body shop was when I went in and did a little come shopping with me in their store, they have a recyclable point. And I thought, well, is this just for body shop empties? But actually it's not. It's for all empties. Body Shop have partnered with a company called TerraCycle. Now, TerraCycle are thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up because they are the company that will dismantle each individual beauty item. They'll check the recycling credentials of each individual piece. They'll know if that glass can be recycled, that plastic inner can be then recycled somewhere else. The little pump action, the little metal ring, they know how to break it up. Whereas you and I, 
if we're not smart, we just sort of stick it in the plastic because it's mainly plastic and actually it needs to be broken up into its content. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only person here that has a recycled. They have green for paper, red for plastic and tin and, well, no, it's green for glass, blue for paper, red for plastic and tin. It's really hard to separate one product out. So yes, obviously I want you to recycle your products, but try to, if you can, and you're looking for new products, buy products with minimum packaging. Perfect case in point, look at Lush, look at Body Shop, and look at actually taking your empties back in store when they open up, and look for your nearest TerraCycle recycling point. I believe that Superdrug and Boots are going to have them this year when stores open so much being messed up by COVID. Now my next shout out, you're gonna be surprised by, after Lush, and Body Shop, I'm gonna give a massive shout out to the L'Oreal Group and specifically to Garnier. Why Garnier? Because you can say all you want about a niche brand with green credentials. That's gonna make minimum impact because hardly anybody's buying those products. You need the big companies to get on board. And a few years ago, somebody at Garnier said, we need a USP in the market. I'm not, I mean, I literally think it came across as this skin, cynical and this skeptical, what should we do? And somebody somewhere on that brand cared enough to stand up and say, we should become the first mass market green brand. They are doing so well. Yes, they've partnered with TerraCycle, so you'll find Garnier drop-off points. I think in Boots and Superdrug, where you can only drop off the Garnier recyclable empties. But look at this, shampoo bars, and they're pretty good. I'm not sure I could use them on my hair, but my hair is all kinds of damage. But if you've got teenagers with healthy, happy hair, if you've got anybody with unprocessed hair, although I do know that um, Davina swears by the, the coconut ones, but look at this. They last longer, they're solid cleansing bars, they gently foam, and that's the packaging. So you've got something that falls flat with no plastic, I've been talking about bars for years, right? It, um, do you remember the video I did with Jo where she told me her young girls didn't know what a bar of soap was, they saw it in somebody's house? Fast forward two years later, I'm so old fashioned, I've come back in fashion. You all know that I absolutely love this. This is what I use to cleanse my body every single day in the shower. This is the Dove Sensitive Skin Micellar Bar. It's the Solid Cleansing Beauty Bar. I've been using it for years. I've never particularly liked shower gels unless it's for a special occasion and I want to smell nice. Even so, I would use this first and then sort of use a shower gel over the top or a shower foam over the top to smell nice. This is absolutely brilliant. It's, a, it's not a soap, it's a super fatted cleansing bar. And by that, I mean it's both pH balanced for the skin and it's loaded with ceramides and humectants and emollients to moisturize your skin as it cleanses. And I love it, I absolutely love it. This is the unfragranced one. I prefer it because I use it all over. Pointing down there. Get back to bars. Do yourself a favor, get back to bars. This is a, a double pack, which does have a plasticized wrapper on the inside, but on the inside, there are two uh, cardboard packaging inside. It's cheaper to buy two at once. The other one I really love, and I know the pH isn't brilliant on it, but I've got fairly tough body skin, is I really absolutely love Simple. That is more of a soap, less of a super fatty cleansing bar, but I think my skin is fairly resilient. And also I love this because it's really good at getting rid of uh, antiperspirant. Uh, the Dove is far more gentle. This actually will really strip underarms, but you know, if you've worn a really strong antiperspirant and you've done a lot of Pilates or yoga or worked out or something, this will really get your armpits clean. We'll see because it's unfragranced. So let's shout out to Simple, let's shout out to Dove, let's shout out to Garnier who are doing amazing things. And let's also do a shout out to Garnier's sister brand, L'Oreal Paris, because as I said in one of my videos at the end of last year, Elviv are now using recyclable plastic in their bottle. So we've used, we've moved from reduce to recycle, right? Okay, so you reduce what you buy, you reduce the, the packaging that it comes in, and then you start to recycle. And I think the interesting thing about recycling is it's a minefield, right? A lot of people think that glass is more eco-friendly than plastic. It's not. It's like this, it's like Lady Liberty. Plastic obviously never really breaks down, glass does. Glass melts at 1700 degrees C, plastic melts at 200 degrees C. Where does the energy come from to melt and reuse these products? The environment. Plastic is light, it's cheaper, 
and easier to carry, it's cheaper and easy to move on lorries, to move on ships, to move in planes around the world, it has less of a carbon footprint. Glass is heavy. It's not as straightforward as you think, right? I'm going to tag below this a few people that I think are really interesting and you should follow. But what you're looking for is you're looking for formulating chemists or you're looking for people, brand owners, that work specifically with material scientists. It's the material scientists that have worked out the carbon footprint and the ecological footprint of each individual component in your beauty product. I'm not slagging off any brands here. The beauty industry is essentially, by its nature, non-essential, right? Short of a cleanser and an SPF, what do you actually need in life to stay alive and stay healthy? So we have to think about these things because we have an impact. Trust me, let's have a talk about the palm oil business. Palm oil is found in beauty products, but the palm oil used in beauty products is so small in comparison to the palm oil used in cooking as to be insignificant. However, soybean oil, which is often used to replace palm oil, is an ecological nightmare because it empties the soil of the nutrients that it needs. So palm oil supports local people but can cause deforestation. Soybean oil takes much more intensive farming and takes the goodness out of the land to leave the land fallow for longer. So you've also got to think about the people that are making a living buying and creating and farming the active ingredients. I, it, the impact of our beauty products blows my mind. It's not black and white. And I decided to create this video when I put a story up about my microfiber cloths. Now these are the microfiber cloths. This is the first microfiber cloth I ever fell in love with. This is makeup eraser. They last for absolutely ever. They're made of plastic. Microfibers nine times out of 10 are made of plastic. So they're not great, they're made of plastic but it's a relatively small piece of plastic compared to say a polyester shirt or a polyester outfit or the polyester in your clothes. And my argument is, I know it's not perfect, but this alone will work with water if you want to reduce your impact so you have to buy less cleansers, but it also supercharges all your cleansers. So as a result, it takes me four times as long to get through a cleanser as it takes the average person because this supercharges my cleanser. As a result, I buy less cleanser. I create less plastic waste. I have less of an impact, six of one, half a dozen of another. However, I also know people that say, well, they'd much rather use a white towel or white flannel. Cotton doesn't come in this color. This is bleached. Cotton, as an industry, a fabric industry, takes more water than any other single manufacturing process. However, I am on a mission to find great bamboo microfiber. The other thing that they can create that has a microfiber finish, because microfiber has to be, when I say plastic enough, it doesn't have to be plastic, it can be bamboo, but it needs to be flexible enough to be forced through a machine that produces microfibers, super fine fibers. The idea behind a microfiber is the finer the fiber, the larger the surface area, the more it mops up whatever muck is left on your face. These are the best I've ever tried. Generally microfibers that are bamboo based are a bit rough and not very nice. I know I've been researching this to try and find a decent microfiber cloth. This is the bamboo barrel and it's from Style Pro. I've talked about this before. That's got a cotton on one side and a microfiber and that's a bamboo microfiber. It's the softest I've ever known. I'm determined to find large versions of this that are lovely. And that actually comes in a little wooden bamboo barrel. I'll take a photo and show you that. What you do with your microfiber cloths is you wash them in a little, the reason you have to put them in here is that's gonna to stick to the inside of your barrel and you're gonna lose it. It's the same with Face Halo. Face Halo is advertised as being eco-friendly. It's still plastic, still microfiber. But I do get the argument, because the argument is you use this, right, well, I mean, I don't use individual little pads like this, but you use that in place of a cotton wool pad, which, where does that go? In the bin, down the toilet? It's bleached cotton, it's not good for the environment. Things aren't straightforward. No judgment here, things aren't straightforward. Let's move on to some glamour, shall we? 
I want to give a shout out to the brands, and I know I did this earlier on in the year, I want to give a shout out to the brands who are high end, who are finally realizing that they need to create reusable packaging. The biggest shout out to Fenty, 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 because I just think it takes somebody of that generation to say, this is what we need to do. And I talked about this in last week's video. This is the brand new overnight um, recovery gel. It, it, what does she say on it? Earth conscious and clean. Clean, define clean, Rihanna. But anyway, this is what we're looking for. So you buy the unit, it comes with a little refillable pot. And then what you end up doing is you end up only throwing that away rather than all of that. It's genius. The SPF, the face visor is amazing, comes in the same sort of refillable pot. Dermalogica are doing it. This is my beloved daily microfoliant. I absolutely love it. It's now refillable. So you only throw away that instead of all that in there. You know what daily microfoliant looks like, don't you? I love it. I love it. It's my only physical exfoliant I regularly use. So instead of throwing away all that, you just throw away that. Companies can do it. They can do it. As Spa have recently done refillable packaging. That's a beautiful spa brand. Uh, do you remember Joe talking about Aroma Active? I mean, this is a brand new brand. It only launched in Boots at the end of last year. The whole idea is every single piece of packaging is either recyclable or reusable. And I think that's really clever. I mean, there was a time when this was all a little bit eco, but now that's super fashionable. I just absolutely love the plain na nature of that. Oh, and by the way, if you think stainless steel is, uh, is a better option to glass. It's not. That's got a huge eco footprint as well. That's why we all have to reduce. First rule, reduce. There's a perfect case in point, and then you've got all of the eco credentials on the back. And if you're unsure of these, just Google them, because they do mean different things. There's a recyclable with the arrows going round, and then there's uh, the vegan one, the, the use by one. So learn these little symbols here. It's important to learn which each what each of the the symbols mean. So a lot of that is in uh, metal packaging, it even comes with a really clever winding key. And the winding key is to put on the end of the plastic and the metal bottles and twist. So you get every last drop out. And I really love that. So in a way it sort of shoots them in the foot because often a lot of packaging, you, you leave a well of product in, but they're saying use it to the last drop. I mean, obviously I cut my packaging open. I don't worry about that. And it doesn't even have to be sort of chic and fun packaging. It can be super high end. I mean, look at this. This is the Hourglass Confession Lipstick. What do they say? Rechargeable, I love that. That's another R to use. Rechargeable is essentially refillable. So basically it's a sh super chic, absolutely beautiful lip product and you can refill it. I remember, and I'm going to, I'm gonna name somebody here today. I remember when Victoria Beckham, which was the summer of 2019, launched her first eye products. And in them was a little, tiny little palette. It was a trio, absolutely beautiful, really heavily weighted, sort of gold metal with a sort of almost tortoiseshell. It was inspired by vintage packaging. It was absolutely gorgeous. And right at the last minute, you could tell somebody had said to Victoria Beckham, oh, we better be a bit green here. So she sort of slapped on a sort of clean label. And the first thing I said when I picked up this palette, which is beautiful, is I, I was trying to put my finger through the bottle to see if it was refillable. Who in their right mind created something super high end, super weighty, super beautiful, super collectible, and decided not to make it refillable. I charge you with a thought. If she was to launch in summer 2021, it would be unthinkable that that palette wasn't refillable. It was unthinkable to me then, but <laughs> I'm a beauty disruptor. I like to ask the difficult questions. And I think I might've said it quite loudly within earshot of the product developer. But everybody's polite in the beauty industry and nobody asks the questions. But in a global pandemic, when we have been stuck at home for 11 months, it's gone in some ways slowly and in some ways quickly. We're all unpicking the impact that we ha as individuals have on the world. And more importantly, we are constantly plugged into news that is global. And the minute you see yourself not as being a citizen of the city you live in, but as a global citizen, you begin to think of your impact. Now, I'm no Greta here. 
I don't know much about this. I just know about the beauty industry and I know that things aren't clean cut and thinking about the impact of the products that I have. But I think the key thing here is in a world of four R's now, thank you to Hourglass, reduce, reuse, refill, recharge, try reducing first because that's the single most important thing you can do. In a world of fast fashion, we have to be careful here not to fall in a world of fast beauty. Buy things you can afford, try and buy them on the high street. Try and buy as many bars as possible. Shampoo bars, cleansing bars. It will be the way forward, trust me. Everybody's looking at their bar technology. Try and think about using products that have minimum packaging and that allow you to use less of a product. But also think about refillable packaging. And then finally, look up recycling. Because people are focusing on recycling and actually recycling is just part of the puzzle. But do look up your nearest TerraCycle company and find out where you can drop off all of your beauty empties. Because sticking them in your own recycling bin might come back and bite you in the backside. Because if an expert doesn't look at it, they don't know how to take apart the component parts. And also learn about the little symbols on the back of your packaging. Understand what they mean. Understand what the percentage of the recycling means and how much is recycled and how much is reusable. Just think about your impact. No judgment. Literally, no judgment. You do you. I'm far from perfect. Trust me, look what I do for a living. I mean, my house is heaving with beauty products. Although that said, I do give most of it to a charity, to the lovely beauty banks when I can. Missing Joe during the pandemic. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Below, I want you to give me a shout out to your favorite eco-friendly non-green washing brands. I don't care what they're doing as long as they're doing something somewhere. Whether they're offsetting carbon emissions, whether they're looking at recycling, whether they're looking at reusable plastics, whether they're looking at using products like bamboo in place of microfiber, whether they're using bars. Let's have a shout out. Let's start a little collective of all the beauty brands that we should cheer on. Yay, I feel like that's a bit of a positive note, isn't it, for 2021? Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you soon.